transition parce que je suis business. Je suis guéri au microphone test. Un, un, deux. Uh, I was introduced to hip hop by, by uh, a close friend of mine who was from Camden, New Jersey. And uh, he, he introduced me to, uh, you know, he was listening to Slick Rick, Special Ed, Public Enemy. Um, and I was, uh, I was amazed, it was especially Special Ed and Slick Rick. And I memorized all the, their CDs. Um, and I got, I got into freestyling with him. A bunch of the older guys would like to listen to us freestyle and make fun of each other. So uh, I would go to I would go to Jersey every weekend on the train, and um, and I started back then. It was I would say in 19 uh, it was probably about 1990 that I started rapping at first, but in uh, I would say 92, 93 with Cypress Hill, House of Pain, and Redman. Those three artists. Um, were the artists that made me know that this is what I wanted to do. And uh, from then on, I took I took music very serious, and I knew that I wanted to do it. Um, I probably did my first show in 1996. Um, it was probably the first time I performed live, so it's been, I've been, I've been doing it for a while, you know? The first time I met hip hop is probably Run DMC. My father and my mother was record collectors, and uh, I found a Run DMC record, their first album, and that's probably the first time I found hip hop. And then uh, maybe like 96 in high school, everyone battled each other, like in rap and stuff like that. And that's how I started battle rapping and things like that. Um, I, I'm from Newark, New Jersey, and where, where I started is like Outsiders, Red Man, stuff like that. So I started low there first doing shows and things like that in North New Jersey. I had a, I was in a group called Outer City, me and my cousin, and we do shows everywhere in New Jersey. And then I moved to Pennsylvania and I started working with Godzilla, Adlib, King Magnetic, you know, people like that. And that's where my career started, doing collabos with, with these guys. And we, we become a crew and tight with each other. That's what I was saying. I got um, I got my start actually doing uh, hardcore shows. Um, when I started when I started performing live, there wasn't too many hip hop showcases for me to perform at. So uh, I was starting with uh, in the PA hardcore scene, and I was getting on stage at hardcore shows and, and freestyling. Um, I would say hip hop wise, uh, Doodlebug from Diggable Planets um, brought me brought me out to a couple shows. Um, and put me on stage, would, would let me incorporate me into his show, which got me a lot of love. Um, and then, you know, the guys that came up in my scene in, in Philadelphia, Reef the Lost Cause, um, of course, Magnetic, uh, Vinny Paz, all the AOTP guys have always showed me a lot of love. Um, and of course, Danny Diablo and, and the whole DMS crew, um, they, they've always showed me a lot of love. So, uh, you know, I thank a lot of those guys for, um, you know, getting me where I'm at right now, for sure. I got a new record coming out. Right, right now, I'm still promoting Brass Knuckle Hustle, which is available right now. Uh, it came out on Ill Rock Records. It's featuring a lot of dope artists. Um, Reef the Lost Cause, my Freedom 30 squad, uh, Slain, uh, UG, just a, a, a million different dope artists. Danny Diablo, I'm promoting that now. May 25th, I got a new record coming out on Red Phone Records. It's called Bad Intentions. Um, I'm really proud of this record. I think it's my best work to date, for sure. Um, I, I think a lot of the songs are, are, uh, are a lot more timeless. I have some older songs that I that I never put out that I, that I, I felt needed to be heard, so I put them on this record. So it's a little more of a serious record, um, but I think that uh, I keep consistent to, to my style and, and, and to what I do. I don't I don't go too far off the off the track of what um, uh, uh, the way I write and the way that I approach doing songs. On this record, I got I got Vinny Paz, I got Slain, Jay Son from Special Teams, UG, Block McCloud, Reef the Lost Cause. Uh, my Freedom 30 brothers, Ali Arms, A1, God Ella, Caesar Glomgold. Uh, I, I don't want to forget anybody, Snow Booms, Victor Axe, uh, my man DJ Stress mixed it and, and mastered the whole record. So um, I'm, I'm real proud of the record, it's coming out soon. Uh, like I said, May 25th, and uh, 
that's about it. As far as my future, I'm gonna just keep consistent, man. That's all you can do is uh, is, is continue to grow, continue to stay consistent, um, always stay myself and, and uh, stay true to myself. Keep keep the shit hardcore, and that's all I can do, man. You know. And I got a, people. I got an album coming out like mid mid summer. It's called Levitation. It's gonna drop on my label probably, maybe Red Phone Records. My label is Heaven's Basement in America. And uh, I got a lot of the same people. I'll try to keep it food tight on this album, not a lot of outsiders and stuff like that. Speaking of outsiders, going Pace One, Reef the Lost Calls. That's about the only people I'm gonna get from outside of our squad. I wanna keep it food tight. And it's dropping like mid to late summer, it's called Levitation. I got my man, uh, Freddie Mabo and Danny Diablo on my record as well. I don't want to forget them. They, you know, that's probably my favorite song I ever made. So, big shout out to Freddie Mabo and Danny Diablo, you know? I think uh, I think our scene is, is is dope, man. I think the underground scene, the independent scene, I don't, I don't like to say underground, but I think the independent scene is dope. I think that, uh, you know, a lot of people say hip hop's dead or whatever like that, but at the end of the day, there's good music and bad music. There's always gonna be good music, there's always gonna be bad music. You have to look for it. That's the bottom line, where it's independent, whether it's mainstream, uh, whatever it is that you like, you have, to, you have to search for it and you have to support the artists that you like. No matter if it's mainstream, no matter if it's uh, underground, no matter what it is, you have, to, you have to be able to support that artist. Um, my advice to upcoming artists, keep your shit independent. Because yeah. main, because big labels, you don't make no money, man. Yeah. Keep your shit independent, take your career and put it in your own hands. Like, I, I, I give props to some people that's on mainstream because they still can get money. But if you want to go like how we're in Spain and stuff like that, the best way is to keep it independent and keep it in your own hands. Don't, these, these major labels is machines, man. Yeah, you, you, you gotta, for me, for me personally, I can only speak for myself. The most important thing is the people that support your music. You have to understand the, the, the people who support you and you have to make sure that uh, you always keep them uh, first and keep them in mind, you know? Um, you can't ever forget um, that at the end of the day, all we're really doing is, is writing rhymes and you know, putting our heart, putting our soul in, the, on, in, in these songs. So at the end of the day, if there's not someone there that wants to hear that, you know, you're not making a living off of this, so you have to you have to know your your demographic. You have to know who who can relate to you, and, uh, and and continue to make music for them. You know, once you start to try to make music for people that aren't like you, I think that's when people fail. You know, and they try to sell out. They try to call it a sellout or whatever like that. But it, I think it's not because they're making dance music. I think it's because they're making music that's, that's not from, that's heart, not from not them. Heart. You know, if, you, if you're into going to the club and you're into getting money and you're into dancing doing that, do it. You know, and you know, I, those artists are usually the artists that I, that I like that do that music, you know, because it's actually them. You can tell it's them. But when a hardcore artist or somebody that's, you know, tries to start making other kind of music, man, that's when they fail. You know, you gotta, you gotta know your audience and you gotta stay true to that. You gotta stay in your lane. You can't get too greedy, you know? <laughs> I, I think the uh, the highlight of, of my career so far, um, I'm, I think I would have to say performing at Royal Arena and uh, the Royal Arena Festival in Switzerland. There was so many people um, and just being able, I was on stage by myself for a minute and then I rocked with Reef the Lost Cause, but to, to be out on stage just totally just me and the microphone and DJ and however many thousands of people, that was, that was an amazing experience. Um, the worst moment, man. You know, I, I've had I've had situations where I had to, you know promoters have to have a talking to in the in the office because money ain't right or uh, fights in the, in the in the crowd or you know shows where where shit pops off before you even get to get on stage and you know you gotta take care of business that you don't want to take care of so. There's a lot of bad memories, man. You know what I mean? But there's a lot of good memories, so for every bad, there's a good. And, uh, you know, that's life, man. You know what I mean? It's pretty good balance, you know? I think my best show, I mean, music experience was two days ago. 
in a town called Tarragona. It was a small venue, but the kids there were so wild, and they it, it was amazing to me that they didn't know English, but they were like going so like insane, man. and to me that was like the best. It didn't have to be like a big event. It was small. But these kids, they 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 love the music, man. I felt like good giving that to them, bringing America rap to their town. It was good for me. Worse. Um, one time when we was in a big club fight, a riot and chairs and magnetic was there. That was probably the wildest. It was fucking yeah, insane. It was, like, crazy. it was because we had nothing to do with what happened. A riot came backstage and it was calm, and then all of a sudden, boom! Right. <laughs> what we had to do, we had to fight. Put our backs to the wall and fight until we got out of there. So. I, I think the, the, you know the other the other the other thing that's hard is man you, the, a lot of a lot of uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, like bullshit that goes on behind the scenes you know from labels to promoters to everything you got there where everybody's trying to get a fast buck everybody's trying to rob Peter to pay Paul and uh, you know that makes it makes it tough man it makes it tough to continue but at the end of the day to be able to be blessed to be able to go around the world this is my fourth time in Europe and you know I'm just a kid from the streets man so to be able to to be around the world I would never be able to go anywhere outside of Philadelphia Allentown PA area you know um, so this hip hop has brought me around the world you know numerous times so I'm blessed man you know I can't even look at the bad yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that uh, I think it's I think it's dope that in, in, in Europe they're listening to uh, they're more open-minded, you know, and not not as close-minded. In, in America, there's maybe five, ten artists that you hear on the radio constantly. So uh, we don't look to try to be on the radio or to be on TV. Um, and a lot of the artists within our scene are the same way. And um, you know, to, to I think the biggest thing that you that you realize in Europe is like, of course, you use the social networks as an artist, you know, the Facebook and the Twitter and stuff like that, and and you see uh, a, a reaction from from Europe. But it's a lot different when you get here and realize how many people in the streets, um, you know, know certain songs from YouTube and stuff like that. That they're not on Facebook, they're not on Twitter. In America, a lot of artists. Um, a lot of up-and-coming artists are like Facebook rappers, you know, they, they wouldn't have a career if it wasn't for Facebook. When I got started, there was no social network, you know, when I when I got started, I was making cassettes. Um, I was, there wasn't even CDs, so um, the grind was a lot different, the, you know, the, um, the way to have to promote to yourself and to try to even get out of your city was way different. Nowadays, you can just record a song at your house, make a video the same day, be on Facebook, and you think if you have 5,000 friends on Facebook that that means something, but um, I think you really realize when you come to Europe and you realize how many people that don't even, aren't even on Facebook, they're not on Twitter, and they still come up, want to take a picture, want, you know, want to get your CD, want to, you know, and already know songs that are on your CD. That's a beautiful thing, man. It's a blessing, and uh, I, I, I'm grateful for each and every person in Europe and across the world that listens to my, my music, you know? And a lot of a lot of artists in America, they spend too much time fighting amongst each other, and they don't realize that they could go to a broader audience and, and, do, and work with people in Europe and mix the cultures and make yourself more known. They too busy battling and fighting each other. And in America, it's a lot of, a lot of shit talk on the internet and you know, social networks like that. You know, and, it, and it ruins your career. You, you, you pigeonhole yourself. Yeah. You pigeonhole yourself. Yeah, there's a lot more. I think there's a lot more. I, I don't know. But I think there's a lot more unity amongst the yeah. artists in, in Europe. I noticed that, you know, when, when the opening groups come on, they stay and they they uh, they show support for, for each other. Yeah. Whereas in America, man, you know, one, one group will get off stage, they're out, they leave, you know, and uh, it, it's harder, you know, at the end of the day when you perform in America, you're only performing for your supporters. Everybody else's supporters left with them, you know, so I think there's more unity amongst artists in, in Europe and that's a beautiful thing, man, that's what we need more of that, you know. That's how it used to be, to be honest. That's how it is down south, you know? they love each other, in, in Oakland and stuff, but it's like a lot of like, 
rap like we do, like underground, east, northeast rap, like it's a lot of hate. Man. I think the other thing is in America, everybody raps. Everybody makes beats, everybody raps, everybody does it. So we grew I up, it's, it's it was weird different. to be a rapper. When we was in school, when we was little kids, it was weird. Now, everyone raps like any mama. I literally saw somebody's mother rap. <laughs> somebody's mom. <laughs> Um, yeah, like I said, I, I grew up on uh, Slick Rick, Special Ed, Public Enemy, um, Rakim, Rakim, of course, Man KRS One. Um, but you know, I, as I was in my teenage years, it was definitely Red Man, Cypress Hill, House of Pain, Wu Tang Clan, Nas. Nas you know, that's what uh, that's that's what I grew up on. I think that uh, as far as today's generation, I, I have a 15 year old son. So, I, what I think it is, is that when Wu-Tang came out, the old heads that, that grew up on, on like Sugar Hill Gang and Run DMC, they thought Wu-Tang was crazy. They baggy jeans and Timberlands and, and, and fatigues. And they said we look crazy and that that wasn't hip hop and that this, that, and the third. And I think it's the same thing now. Like we, we don't understand because we're older, so we don't understand the skinny jeans and the and the, the you know the the odd future and all that shit. Like I think it sucks. But for kids, like who am I to say like you know every generation thinks that the current music sucks. You know, it's just something. You know when my mom when my mom was young and started to listen to Elvis, her parents told her like yo you fucking crazy. You don't listen to this shit. You know, this is shit music. So, uh, you know, the old heads just tell me Wu-Tang. It's Wu-Tang, you know what I mean? The fucking Wu-Tang clan. So nowadays, I say the same thing about, you know, Little V and, and all that bullshit. So, you know, I, 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 I don't, I'll never hate on, on anybody who's doing what they love to get money. No matter who it is, like, if, if, it's, if, it, if it's music that I don't like, I'll just leave it alone. As far as like the culture of hip hop, I think it's alive and well. And I don't think that Justin Bieber rapping, I don't think it fucks up the, the true artist, you know, because a true artist is always going to be a true artist. Do I think Justin Bieber should rap? Fuck no. You know what I'm saying? But hip hop, hip hop at this point is so universal. Hip hop is like probably the most, you know what I mean? Like what? The, there's no other music that is is like hip hop is, you know. So I agree that the, the, what's put, getting put out right now, yeah, it's not the hip hop that we that we love. It's not the hip hop that, that is is right for us, you know what I mean? But um, you know, you can't you can't do anything about it, you know. It, it is what it is. There's gonna be there's gonna be shit that's gonna come out. In 10 years down the line, that my son is gonna be like, yo, it's fucking whack, you know what I mean? So, and the other thing is to remember too that back in the day, man, everybody had their little dance tracks, you know what I'm saying? Like, you, you did not have, like, the hardest motherfuckers had their dance tracks. So, hip hop came up, started with with a party, you know? Being an MC, being a DJ, having a party. And, um, you know, sometimes we, we get so consumed with the hardcore shit that, that we forget that you're, you're, you're allowed to have a good time. You know what I mean? You're allowed to go to Great Adventure and go on a fucking roller coaster and have a good time sometimes. It ain't always gotta be frowns and 40s. Who did you like? I don't like Okay. That's what I think about politics nowadays. I think that the rich rule everything. There's no more government. There's no more nothing like that. 1% of the world rules the entire planet. And if you don't got money, you ain't shit. There's no more, there's no more middle class. There's only upper and lower class. And that's what politics is today. There is no politics. There's rich and poor. That's it. That's what I think. Simple. Yeah, I mean, as, as, as far as America goes, I think, that, you know, I think our government is fucking foul. I think that nobody, it's not a secret, you know? It's not something that the rest of the world doesn't know. Our government's crazy, and uh, they think that they're the world police, um, you know? But at the end of the day, every country is probably the same, you know, when it, when it comes down to, when it comes down to, like, you know, what the governments are up to, it's about the people, you know, and uh, people sticking together and, and, and 
you know? <laughs> I, want, I want to say I love you to my family because for talking like that, we might not make it back. <laughs> they, we might disappear. Yeah, but it, 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 like he said, man, it, it's rich and poor, man. It, it's not it's, it's, it's not about, uh, you know, Democrat or Republican or this, that, or the third. It's, it's about are you rich or are you poor? If you're poor, you're in the streets. If you're rich, you're not. This is what it is. There's no middle class in there. You know? Sad, man. Sad. You know what I do like about Europe? They got health care for free. In America, you don't got health care, you're dead. <laughs> you're dead. That's, that's, that's one good thing about Europe. Yeah. Why are we done at a kid I like for hip hop? Um, I mean, I'll be honest with you, I, I was a fuck up in school. I got kicked out from, from sixth grade until 12. I went to a different school every year for an array of reasons. <laughs> you know what I mean? But I always got kicked out of school. I, I didn't graduate from high school. I dropped out of high school. Writing and hip hop has always been my passion. And to be perfectly honest, it's, it's one of the only things that I'm very good at. That I, at least I feel very good at. I'm very dedicated to it. And, uh, you know, I, to be able to have one person tell you, you know, to tell you that you, you've been able to help them out and touch them through your music, I think that's enough alone to continue to do it just for, for one person, let alone, you know, the hundreds of thousands. So, um, you know, that's, 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 that's basically what keeps me going. You know, stuff like this being in Barcelona is the, you know, is the reason why I continue to, to make hip hop and, and continue to make my music and will always continue to do it. And the end of everything, we just like two street kids, man. If you're from the streets, then hip hop touches your heart, man. Not only if you're from the streets, hip hop is a type of music that touches your heart, man. It's different than a lot of a lot of music. Like classical is good music, it's pleasing to the ears, but it but it doesn't touch the heart. Like hip hop, if you like a regular person, it touch your heart. It's the, it's the voice of the streets, man. Voice of the streets. It's the voice of struggle, you know, and, and uh, you know, the church used to bring my, my family groceries. You know what I'm saying? That's just what I come from. So, you know, there's there's nothing else that you can embody that and and, and get out get out the inner inner uh, you know whatever's going on on the inside. There's nothing more that you could uh, get a release from than hip hop to me. And again, like I said, man, you know, I come from nothing. So to be to be able to be standing here and talking to you. Shit, that's enough for me to keep doing this, you know, at least for another 12 months. <laughs> I think I think the main reason that you, you see bands like Rolling Stones and them performing to their 70s because they're playing, they're making the music live on stage. Instruments. Um, and the instruments. And I, and I think that you're going to start to see... At, no, it's already happening. I mean, as soon as as soon as soon you see uh, in America, as soon as uh, a uh, hip-hop artist gets to a certain level that they're playing in, in arenas, they already start to use a band because you're creating the music right on stage and it's a different experience when you see a band than when you just have a... Now, don't get me wrong though, that I think that all those artists should continue to have that DJ on stage because that's the foundation. The DJ is the foundation of, of a, of a hip-hop live show. But, um, I mean, I think that's the main reason, you know, and because hip-hop's, you know, style changes so much, you know, through, throughout the years, and, you know, nobody wants to see Jay-Z up there 70 years old talking about, you know, Marcy Projects, it's, you know what I mean, so, I mean, but with a band, he switches it up, yeah. you know, songs, shit like songs, that, shit like that. The songs can outlet, you know, they can, they can play a, a hit song for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, keep the crowd involved, and, so if you rap, if y'all want some longevity, fuck with a band. Yeah. I, I, and, uh, you know, I think that when, when you have to put the, the tours together, too, man, like, I, I think that, uh, you know, you put you put the right artists together, I think that they can rock, you know. I'll go see, I just saw Big Daddy Kane two months ago, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And he, and he did a dope tore it down, he did a dope tore it down, so, yeah. you know. Yeah. It's fickle, man, the, the art, I think, I don't know in Europe, but I know in America, you know, people always want to see the next new thing, you know, so. Yeah. We're very, we're very like, our attention span is like this. Right? We only like something for a year, you know? Which is unfortunate, but that's how the majority of people are. So I think that hip hop, you know, caught the ass, you know, caught the ass end of that because. What? I don't know. That's the best that I, that I think I can think of. You know?
Okay. I swear on Jimmy Headband that Ali gon' rock. Claws like Victor Creed, I'm climbing to the top. Spit boxing, I ain't stop until I drop. I'm trying to conquer land, fuck a mansion in the yacht. I'm Genghis Khan with the latest song. I'm Charles Manson if he stayed making songs. Think about it. Do you really want to battle? I could get rid of your body with a fiend that won't tattle. From the ghetto, homie, don't get it confused. I could make bad shit happen that won't be on the news. Shh, quiet. Words start riots. Malcolm X mug shot him dirty like Linus. I'm where you can't find us. Going like the wind. Teflon beard on a shatterproof chin. Swing lead knuckles, your chance looking slim. I break poker faces when I grin. Mm. Look, I'm a grizzly bear. I got gorilla arms. Anything I get a hold of, get torn apart. Catch me in a foreign car, redlining on an autobahn. Far from home, but my heart there where it belong. I'm in Barcelona, my fam De La Rue. I go to Tarragona, I got fam there too. You can hate my crew, they fucking maniacs. Blades of bats put a hole where your brain is at. Fuck a platinum plaque, I rock fell barrio. So I'm sharp off the grind like a barber stone. Me and my partner stone, mariachi. I got a click, got a crew, got a posse. We all familiar, we all brothers. All familiar, we all from the gutter. I got plans to get land for my mother. You stand in the way, meet the man that's above you. Mwah. Yo, I want to give a shout out to all my Freedom Union brothers. El Concepto Promotions for bringing us over here. Showbiz.org. Showbiz.org, hell yeah. De La Rue Crew, Ill Rock Records, Red Phone Records, HipHopHead.net. Everybody else that shows love, all the people of Spain, we love you. We'll see you soon. Hardcore sont mes speeches parce que la vie est une piste. Pas de mon fils et mon 